Hi and welcome back to Game Creation and this is going to be our third episode on Tetris. So I've promised you I will build an array today and that's just what I'll do. Now you might be thinking why do we need an array for this? Well with all the stuff that's going on with blocks going down and then testing to see if they've um, if they've made a block that needs to be removed and testing for collisions and everything else like there's no other way in my head that you can do this without doing an array or it would be very very complicated to compare positions of actives and try and keep all that in your head really the game is the array and the graphics are then created after the array is created um, so I don't know how far we'll get today uh, but I'm hoping to create the array for the um, players block um, and to visually show that without um, necessarily like just visually show the actual outcome of the array and hopefully in position on screen I'm not going to load any of the graphics yet um, this will be quite basic I think for today's video but we shall see let's get started so uh, I've opened up the same project we started last time but as you can see there's just the graphic and then that's it but the dimensions are good everything's um, scaled up five times which is nice uh, and if we don't like it and we want to update the graphics a bit and stuff um, then we can do that um, <laughs> assuming we have time so let's get this array in so I'm just going to get the array in there we are all there and I want it to be a, a number array. I'm not going to put any text in it. Um, and I could be, I don't know, um, bothered to put in the X dimension. I mean, it updates it anyway. So it's going to be 10 across. And we said it was 18 um, blocks down. So there's 18 rows and 10 columns. Um, so that's fine. Um, I might want to play around with the Z dimension later on. Maybe. Um, but we shall see. Um, I always, as you know, um, do base zero index, which means the first um, is going to be zero and the second is one. It's just the way I'm used to doing it. Um, but feel free to make that base one when you do it. It does make things easier and more difficult when you when you come to um, when we come to work out where these blocks are. Um, all you need to do is times the width by the index so zero here and then one and then two so it does make it easier to have a base zero index um, for that but anyway um, right there we go when we have created a array I feel like I've hit the objective for today but we probably want to go a little bit further um, so we need to populate this array at the start of the frame um, so we're just going to say at the start of the frame um, and we're just going to run um, some fast loops just to fill in this array um, so uh, array x in it and there's 10 along the x and then on loop array x in it. I'm just going to drag that because it's basically the same and there's 18 on the y. Okay, and I want to write now. I'm I'm all, I'm going to pick x y z just in case I need to use the z dimension. Um, what I could do is I could use one dimension for the um, the moving player the the the, uh, <laughs> the tile that the player is moving, and then the second dimension for the static blocks uh, instead of having to create two arrays seems to make sense um, so enter value to write um, I'm just going to put a zero in and the x index is the uh, loop for the x in it and then the y index is the loop for the y in it and then it just means initial it just means I'm doing the initial and, and with that you'd have had to add one um, to the loop index because the loops are always zero based um, so again it just makes it easier um, and I could run it but like not an awful lot of stuff's happening um, if I bring in the array so you can see as 10 and 18 uh, double click here to display editor value uh, so let's have a look at where uh, 
oh, 9. Okay, so the ninth one is 0, but there is no tenth one because there's only 10 and it starts at 0. Uh, so they seem to be loaded. Let's check the 11th on the Y. Let's check the 18th, which there shouldn't be, but there should be a 17th. Okay, so it seems to load fine. Now, I want to be able to see this array actually in this bit here. Now, this is going to be interesting. Um, so, um, what I need to do is first of all work out where, like the width here, and I could just hover my mouse over here and it tells you at the bottom left. So it says that's 80, but I could double check that with the graphic I had earlier. Oh, oh, cancel that. I don't know what that's doing. I do know what that's doing, but anyway. Okay, and let's just see what the width is here. So the width is 16. And then we do 16 on our calculator times 5, and it's 80, so it is 80. So what I do is I just write that down on my piece of paper here, so in case I need to know that for later. So when I'm creating graphics, I just need to add 80 to them. Um, so that's good. That's what I wanted. Okay, so... Um, now I want to show these as uh, numbers, and what is really irritating and I think um, Click Team or well, Fusion 3 will have this. If you pick a string, so say if I put string objects here, and what I want to do is I want these to display the array, um, and that's just what I want to do. So I'd have a fast loop in the background, probably the same ones I've already got there, um, and it would create these strings, um, and they would show me what's in each block uh, in the array. It would be really nice. Um, you can't put alterable values to strings and like if you look you can't set any alterable values so I can't keep track of which string is which so imagine I had um, how many did we say 180 different strings here to represent what, what each of the states of the block are um, there's no way of me like saying oh I want that string nope once you put a string down and set its text that's pretty much it for that string. Um, you can obviously put 180 different strings down, but I really can't be bothered to sit there and make 180 different strings. There is a way around this, and this is where I want you to step in and tell me if you found a better way to do this, because this way is awful, um, and I hate myself when I do it. I don't really do it in production, because actually you'll see it's not the best way of doing it anyway. But if you, if you use the speech bubble, um, which you might need to download. So if you go into Manager and type in Speech Bubble, um, I don't think it comes when well, it doesn't come with um, Click Team. You need to download it. Um, and what you do is you just get rid of the arrow, get rid of the shadow, get rid of the outline, just get rid of everything, um, and click OK. Now what I can do now is I can actually set alterable values and alterable strings to this object which is so helpful. So what I want to do, and I need to be really clever here, uh, I need my wits about me. So let's just check where the hotspot is top left. Good, that's why I like it, as you know. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna create a um, speech bubble. And I'm just gonna put it up here somewhere because I'm gonna relocate it. And I'm going to, well, let's just copy the fast loop there. So the position of it, so the X position, and this is where I uh, use my maths here. So the left hand side was 80 plus, and we need to do the fast loop of X, fast loop of X times, and the now the um, tiles are 8 across, but because we've timesed everything by 5, they could be 40 across. And I'm just going to copy that because we probably need something similar for the Y. Um, so, position, set Y coordinate, and I want to essentially do the same thing, but I don't need to add the 80. And let's have a look. Oh, haven't set any text. <laughs> so what I want to do is set the text of the um, 
of that. This is where it gets really complicated. So set text and I want read value from that and oh, it's a little bit a little bit more than I wanted there. And I want the X and the Y. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because I can reuse this later because all we're doing is setting the array to zero at the moment, but um, I, I can just reuse this function later on. Now it says um, it won't, it's not happy because that's actually a value. All you do there is con control an X, right, control A, control X, and then just convert it to a string. So control V to paste it back in. So um, you can't uh, have a string object read a value. You have to explicitly say, I want it to be a string. You can just type this yourself. You don't need to click that button. But I like those buttons. They're well placed. Um, so let's have a look and see if this works. Oh my goodness, it works. There's a horrible outline. Let's get rid of that. Do I want that? Maybe I want that. I can change my mind later on. So outline. And if you put it to black, it gets rid of it. And it's still there. Um, fill. Maybe fill. Nope. <laughs> I did not want to get rid of fill. Good old fill. Uh, maybe, oh, because it's white. So the writing's white. Uh, I always get this wrong. Okay. So I want the colour to be black, and I want the fill to be black, because black fill means transparent. Um, look at the font. Uh, maybe, it, maybe it needs to be just off black, because maybe that makes it transparent as well. There we go. Got there in the end. And you can see, it actually, they're really rubbish fonts. Um, I don't really understand why. I mean, they just come up really badly because this object's really not meant to be used as a string object. Um, let's try Sego. Good old Sego. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look great, but it'll have the effect. And you can see it looks actually pretty darn nice there. And you can see that it fits nicely. Um, it fits with the blocks, so we can actually start manipulating the array. Um, and yeah. So we've created an array and we've actually found a way of displaying the array. Um, and the way I've done the code, um, I can reuse that. So if we ever update the array, um, we can then loop through and update this to show what's happened with the array. Um, this won't be in the production. Like We're not going to actually show these at the end, but it's a good way of debugging what the heck's going on with the array. And I'd always leave it in there and just comment it out. Um, because if there's something weird going on, I can just see what what, what the array is saying. Um, and I'd probably create a separate layer and just put them on the separate layer. Um, but since we're we're not doing graphics yet, um, we're focused just on this. Um, that's a good way of leaving it in. So um, if you find if you have any other suggestions of how um, you can you can achieve this, I'll show you what I mean because I forgot to do that. Um, so. If I edit, I'm just going to nick that loop index, copy it. And um, what I can do is actually set ultra values. So I can set the X of that to the loop index there. And I can set the Y of that to the ultra index there. So I can now reference this. So for instance, if I later on decide to uh, actually insert let's say I want a oh, triple value compared to one of the old triple values if I want a specific one so I want the five the one at five five and I want to set its text to for the win with a string you can't do that but hopefully there we are. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, five, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So with these speech bubbles, you can actually achieve that. 
Um, it's it's such a hack. I, I, I'm praying someone in the comments comes to me and says that there is a better way. Um, so we're going to leave it there for today. Um, we're leaving a lot, ourselves a lot to do for the rest of the week, but I'm confident um, and probably a lot to do for the next um, for the following two weeks. But I'm confident we'll get there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and please let me know if there's any suggestions of ways to improve um, improve our string dilemma. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.